now in our sixth year, this is GavNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the face on the screen in front of you is a, an ex-wife of mine. And she's happy you can to... say and because there, there are at least two. E, e, well, there are at least two. And in fact, uh, let's see how many. There are four. Well, there, if you include the current wife, there have been four wives. No, no, no. She's not a former wife. Oh, okay. So she's a current wife. So I have three former wives. You were number two. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I have a neighbor who has five former husbands. Really? <laughs> well, that's uh, that's interesting. I uh, um, I remember once uh, when we were breaking up, you said to me, "You know, you've never engraved anything on my on our wedding on my wedding ring." Did I say that? Yeah. Mm, okay. Because I hadn't. Uh, I gave you a ring. I didn't have it engraved. We we're going to have it engraved. Never got engraved. And I said, well, it's because time. I, we it, it said because I, I never could figure out what to put on it. I said, but I think I finally have. And you said, oh, what? And I said, number two in a series. Oh, and you didn't even know what you were talking about yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how are you, Ronnie? Well, Ronnie guess, Bennett, by the way, yeah. Guess what? what? Well, get what? I bought the medical aid in dying drugs really and they arrived they mm -hmm. arrived uh, how do you feel about that well it changes it's been a couple of weeks um you know until they were you know they came in a oh you will love this more than most people um i was on a video call with my palliative care physician mm -hmm. when the knock at the door Mm -hmm. Just like sitting here now. So I excused myself. I said, I'll be right back. Went to the door, and it was a courier with this box. So I came back and I said, Look what arrived <laughs> while I'm talking to the palliative care physician. <laughs> and, um, and up until that point, the drugs were theoretical. They're not real yet, you know? Right, right. And now they're real. And uh, so. Uh, I looked at them. There are four bottles, four little bottles, one medium bottle, and uh, and their instructions. And uh, you know, I think, at least in my case, once you've seen those, once they are in your house, once you have handled them, they're not very far from your mind most of the time. Explain that a bit. They're not that far from your mind. You're always thinking about them? It's not always thinking about them, but what I do is I picture where I want to be when I take them in the mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. I know who I want to have here, and I picture them. Um, I Oh, you know, the, um, the pharmacy uh, called me when they were filling the prescription, and this is not something... That they just take off the shelf. They have it's a compounding pharmacy, and right. they have to make the mixtures. And he said, "Do you want, do you want, childproof or easy open caps?" <laughs> I mean, we're talking about death drugs. Yeah, I think he'd put uh, uh, childproof on all of them. <laughs> no, I chose the other. Oh, really? Yes, because I pictured myself maybe standing in the oh, kitchen. Okay, yeah. And you take them in a certain order over the period of an hour and trying to get them open <laughs> and not being able to when maybe I'm in pain and I'm just tired of living and then I drop it and it breaks on the floor. So I went for easy open. <laughs> now, you were saying the other day, and the reason for that being a consideration 
was that uh, no one else can administer these but you. Right. Other states may do that differently, but in Oregon, and they reiter the doctor reiterated that to me when we were going through the protocols that are required mm -hmm. by the to get the drugs. Yeah. Um, that um, I just forgot the question. Uh, the, the question. Uh, now I forgot the question that you <laughs> got the question. Two old people trying to do. Okay, a these are two old people <laughs> trying to do them. Yeah. Uh, no, I said that you. You said that. Uh, they have to be administered by you. They can't be administered by right. someone else. Right. So, yeah. So you have to be of... of uh, oh, you have to be able to do that. Right. And I read something online that's very interesting just in the past few days. I'm not sure if it's Oregon. You know, there are 10 states that allow this now. Mm -hmm. And Washington, D.C. And so I don't remember what if it was a state they were referring to or just in general, but at least somewhere, they're not allowed to dispense these drugs to people with Alzheimer's. And one of the oh. protocols uh, before I could have the drugs was one of my doctors had to certify that I am in a sound mind. But the, the article that I was reading about Alzheimer's and these drugs is that that means a whole lot of people that we know perfectly well What's going to happen if you have Alzheimer's or some other kind of disease can't have the drugs? And is that fair? And what would be a fair way of allowing them to have drugs? And it's all up in the air. Nobody's made any decisions about it, but it's being discussed. My question would be, okay, so to begin with, the reason you have this drug is because when you're in so much pain and death is imminent, yes. you're going to want to take this to be able to go out on your own terms. Let's, it doesn't have to be pain. It could be other things. Yeah, it could be other things. Anyway, um, uh, oh, I, I know another thing. Trump gets reelected. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I'm doing my damnedest to hold on for the results of the election, just not not just voting day. Yeah, well, I mean, the way you look right now, you're going to last through the election and then some. And we'll see. Well, uh, either that or you got a great you makeup. Go along, I've been told it, it, you go along, you go along, you go along, and then you drop off a cliff. So it, either that or you've got a great makeup artist. Well, uh, I do know. have some makeup on. Yeah, I know you have but makeup very on, but I'm I'm just saying. Anyway, the point the point I'm making is uh, that that uh, if you had Alzheimer's, I don't know if you would be of the presence of mind to say I need the drug now. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it's I not don't about now. You can you never ever have to use the drugs, but it's but what was being argued in this article that I read was that in the early stages of Alzheimer's, there probably is not a reason to deny the drugs. Yeah. I mean, then of course, if you do get them in that position, and then later. The, dr the disease has progressed and you want to use them, you have to remember where you put them, which is a problem I was concerned about about me. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, I don't have dementia because quite a few things that I don't use much, but I want to be sure to know where they are, that when I put them somewhere, I make a mental note, oh, those are there. And then the time comes and I want them and I can't remember where I put them. So what mm -hmm. I did with that, I wrote it down in a notebook where I keep them, and I told two people where I keep them. So among those three things, if I forget, someone can help me out. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I don't know if I could do what you're doing. I, I don't know if I could, I, well, I can't say because I'm not in that position, okay? So, uh, you know, but. Alex, the, the, the thing is, I can't either, but what, puts me where we're di where we're in different situations yeah i don't have a husband i don't have somebody living with me if i get to the point where i can't take care of myself feed myself can't get out of bed all that sort of thing i just you know if no way am i going to a nursing home i just you can't nobody well i, I mean I, look we know that the eventuality in this, and I'm, I, people may think I'm being coarse when I say this, but she understands what I'm saying. The the initial, the eventual outcome of this is death, okay? Mm -hmm. And and that being the case, you have to judge when you are so uncomfortable 
that you'd rather go out on your own terms rather than suffer the long, and maybe not long, uh, procedure of, of dying naturally. Right, and you yeah. don't know. That's the point. Yeah. And, you know, if this, if I didn't have these diseases, I would just go on and we'll see what's happening, you know? But I know what's happening. And, um, you know, I wondered about knowing when to do it. And I asked two of my doctors and a nurse, my hospice nurse, and the, all of whom have attended patients when they took these drugs. Mm hmm they've been present and <clears throat> one of them who heads up the little department that runs this at the medical center where I've been treated all these three years he's attended more than 180 and all of them said separately it wasn't like they were in a room agreeing with each other all of them said that every patient that they've been there they believe chose the, a good time to do it mm -hmm. it and, that, and, she, and they've all said to me, Ronnie, you will know. And that's been their experiences with everyone that they've been with. It could so, be there is something instinctual in you as a human being <coughs> that says now's the time. You know, you know, when my last cat was getting ready to die, yeah. um, I have a, like a hutch in the dining room. And at the bottom, there are doors, four doors into storage area and he always would pull it well, all his life he'd go there and pull it when he never would get it open he just would go bang 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 it drive me nuts um he was doing that when he was really sick and so i opened the door and he crawled in there and curled up so i went and got some towels so he could be comfy and everything in there <clears throat> and he stayed inside there i left the door ajar uh, so i could reach in and pet him and we mm -hmm. could talk to each other but he knew and he to where he wanted to be for this his final three or two or three or four days, whatever it was. Yeah. I kept a bowl of water in there. He wasn't interested in eating. And I changed the towels because he'd become incontinent. Mm -hmm. And um and lots of animals do that. They go off by themselves when the time has come. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so maybe maybe being what all the, the two doctors and the nurse said about their patients they believe chose the right time maybe that's what we do too in some circumstances well I, i'm just saying that, <laughs> that there's got to be something at play <clears throat> in that process that says okay now's the time mm -hmm. you know uh i mean i i don't know what that is I, i'm not faced with that at least not now i may be eventually um one of the things that when you asked about I feel about this now is I more frequently have thoughts that are, oh, damn, I am so tired of this. It must be time to go. Um, the, on all different kinds of circumstances, whether I've dropped something in the kitchen or Trump has done something outrageous again, um, I, I, just a, a wide variety of different kinds of annoying things cause me to think, Jeez, does this mean it's time? I mean, I it, it feels yeah. like it, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I it, all I'm saying is I've always had a great fear of death. Okay, and I still do. Most of us do. Most of us. It, it, do. Well, I mean, but mine has been, I don't know, pathological. I don't know. I mean, uh, why do you think I did the psilocybin trip? Well, exactly. Uh, you said, though, that that has started to wear off, the effect of that, the lessons you learned on psilocybin. Do you mm -hmm. wish maybe you had taken it later rather than then? Well, you can't do that. You don't know how much time you have. Well, apparently you've had a lot of time. <laughs> but I didn't know that then. <laughs> you know. I mean, they told me that with the surgery that I had in 2017, I would have probably a year. Without it, I would have a few months. So I wasn't thinking that I would be here more than a year after that. Yeah. And you've been here how long? Over three years. Over three years. From so diagnosis. Yeah. But, you know, so I have this, this great fear of death. My father, who we always like to refer to every now and then because he, he always came up to saying the right thing at the right time. One time he was I, a great guy. I even told him as far back as then, and I was, you know, in my teens, Dad, I'm afraid of death. 
I have this morbid fear of death. And he said, well, don't worry about it. You've been there before. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, before you were born. And all my life now, it has terrified me to think of what it was like before I was born. You know, I mean, it, 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 the, the concept of not existing isn't a concept I can wrap my mind around, mainly because I'm, I'm used to but existing. You're not unique. No, I know I'm not unique. But we I, all have that. But, like, for instance, my wife, she says, I, I don't care. I have no fear of death. She, and she really doesn't. <laughs> She said, you know, compared to what's going on these days, I hope I go soon, you know, I mean, because of, of, of Trump and so on. And uh, I go, you know, I just can't, I can't have that same philosophy. It's not that I love life. It's not like I've embraced life and I've been a joyous, live person, you know. God knows that's not true. But See, I, I really like being alive. Well, I, but I, I do. Being I, alive I, is I, terrific. Let me put it this way: I'd rather be alive than dead. Okay. <laughs> Isn't this a wonderful discussion, folks? I wonder if we only have one person left watching us. You know. <laughs> Today's subject, ladies and gentlemen, death. You know. Yes. Yes. It should be more part of living than it is. I really believe that. Well, you know what you've I'm done. Other he, countries. I'll tell you what you've but done. The, yeah. But can I say something? You, what you've done here with these week, with every other week chats we've had and talking about this is I think you've made it more comfortable for other people. I hope so. I hope so. You know. There's not very much written about the pro process of dying. Um, there's one book by um, a neurosurgeon named Paul Kalanithi, mm -hmm. who's way too young, I think mm -hmm. in his late 30s, um, of cancer and during the period of time from diagnosis to when he died he kept a book that was published posthumously called when breath becomes air and that is the best first person account of this period of time that i've ever read and believe me i have hundreds and hundreds of books on aging and death and dying and that sort of thing um it, it's just a brilliant brilliant book because he was just deadly honest it did, whether he was in lots of pain, yeah. whether he was joyous about the birth of his baby. I mean, think about having a baby, knowing you'll never see that kid grow up, that in the next few months you'll be dead. Yeah. Oh, that must be painful, you know? It, it might be painful, but, you know, the funny part is um, uh, everybody was amazed when I was diagnosed with, uh, <coughs> with prostate cancer. Uh, that I didn't panic in the least, you know, because I have such a fear of death and so on that I, but I didn't panic at all. I just went, okay, we'll get the radiation. Okay, we'll get the seeds. And, da, 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 da. and I handled it with, people couldn't believe how I was handling it. They knew me too well. I should have been screaming and yelling, oh my God, I'm going to die. Do you think I'm going to die? Do you? No. It was quite the opposite. People said, even Marjorie said, you know, I can't believe how calm you've been about this diagnosis. Well, so what else I don't, are you going to be? What else can you well, do? Well, what I'm saying is I don't know if I were in your position how I would react to it because I might have the same reaction. I might say, okay, I know what's going to happen now. So there's, <coughs> why, why panic over it, you know? I mean, <laughs> uh, my whole attitude with the cancer thing was, well, I got it. So, uh, and I've always worried about getting it, as you know, uh, but I got it, and now that I have it, uh, let's do something about it. You know, and I was just very straightforward, about, and it, at no point did I panic. And of course, I had a doctor, when I looked at him, I said, is this the thing that's gonna kill me? He looked at me and he went, no, you know, <laughs> but, but nevertheless, I mean, it, it, I didn't panic about that. So I don't know if, if faced with what you're faced with, if. I wouldn't react in a way other than I believe I would react, which would be, oh my God, I'm going to die. You know. Well, yeah, how many times can you say that? I mean, it's not a sustainable it, position. It is, it, it, quoting Trump, it is what it is. You know, uh, uh, it, let's it, not go there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you just have to accept it. And you, you have handled it just beautifully. I mean, just wonderfully. No. All I do is be whatever it is I am today. Well, I know what your answer would be. I have no other choice. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it. Um, I have bad times, but I think that all the stuff of daily life, whether mm-hmm. it's washing dishes, cooking a meal, getting the laundry done, writing a blog post, whatever, um, I've got more to do than there's time. And I have very little time these days. I tire so easily that, you know, you have about 16 hours a day of time. I have less than eight a day to do everything I used to do in twice as much time. Wow. I'm always behind. There's always something to do. A lot of it is mundane, stupid stuff, as I said, like laundry and doing the dishes. But others is really interesting. And there's plenty of books to read and TV shows or movies that I'd like to see and people to talk to um, on the phone or via Zoom like this. And, there's, and, and that takes me out of myself when it gets to be hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just, you know, I just, I think that by the fact that you're just doing this as a service to people who someday might be facing what you're facing. Uh, I hope so. I mean, otherwise I'm just talking to myself. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are people who are watching this who are in this situation who are saying to themselves, she's making it easier on me. So, you you know, you've done a real service that way. I hope so. I hope so, because otherwise I'm just self-indulgent. Well, that's, you know, that would be true. Um, so, uh, anyway, enough about death. We got about, uh, <laughs> we got about four minutes left here. Uh, what do you think about the state of our nation? I just, there's, you know, there's hardly any point in reading the news anymore. Um, somebody asked me this morning if I'd been watching the Democratic Convention such as it is. No, why? I don't see why. I, 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 I I've been watching a certain speech. I can go yeah. to YouTube. It'll be there. Um, I've been watching it be- because I'm fascinated by <clears throat> how they've managed to pull this off, and they've done a pretty good job of it. You know. Well, I don't know because I didn't watch. In fact, I, I kind of like it more than the normal conventions because you haven't got all the yeah, balloons. It's television. And that's all it is. Yeah. I've watched little bits and pieces and. They're just doing the Zoom meeting, a giant Zoom meeting, you know. Yeah, but they did the roll call of the states last night, and it was it was it was, you know, interesting. I know all the state names. I know, but you don't know that they're the great state where so and so was from. You know what? I'm 79 years old. Do you know how many times I've heard those words said at conventions? Yeah, yeah. No, um, uh, been there. What they did it doesn't interest me. It's it's funny, you know, the thing about being a short timer. Yeah is it's real clear what's important to pay attention to and what isn't. And there's no reason to tune into this. Okay, what is number one on your list of the most important things to pay attention? Oh, I don't rank them like that, I can't. Okay, but what is? what are a couple of them then? Um, to spend time, whether it's this way or in person with people I care about. Mm-hmm. Um, to, you know, one of the things about writing my blog about this period in my life mm-hmm. is that I'm trying to explain it to myself what I feel or think. Mm-hmm. I'm not real good at knowing that until I write it down. So if I weren't doing a blog post about this stuff, I would still be writing it down somewhere because, you know, William Faulkner, novelist of the early 20th century, <clears throat> once said, how do I know what I think until I see what I say? And I read that in my 20s, and I went, wow, yes, because I'm right here stumbling at your question, because I don't know for sure, but if, when we hang up, if I went over and started writing about what are the top three most important things to me at this point in my life, Mm -hmm. just write and write and write and write until I could finally get somewhere. And that's how I do those things. So, so, so writing is, is really it, important to me. So writing is very important to the process yeah. that you're going through. Because you can say Whether it were for publication or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so... And also, know, yeah. also, what is really important, something I've done all my life, but much more pointed now, is I'm always like, there's a piece of me sitting over here watching me. Mm-hmm. And I'm always watching, how am I reacting to this? And this is, you know, we just sat here and talked about your fear of death. I have fear of death, maybe not as much as before, but 
But it's there. Yeah. I'm watching myself react to all of this all the time. And not just this, though, but when I run out of breath, how it makes me feel, how do I handle it? And I do that a lot because of the COPD. And I forget that I can't walk New York speed anymore, so that gets me in trouble. And, um, and I just watch when I read something that, that seems to affect me in some way. I'm, there's a piece of me also looking at my reaction to see how I'm reacting mm -hmm. to it. Um, and that's important to me. I've always done that in my life. But uh, this is more, this is, hey, you know, this is the biggest event of my life. Sorry about being married to you there, but it comes below that. Oh, well, okay. That and uh, it's the biggest event since being born, which I don't remember. And I want to pay attention mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a very specific, pointed way. And see, see what it does to me and how I respond. Well, we've run out of time. I mean... I don't mean that. Oh, just as well. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean that in any morbid fashion. I mean just we've run out of time. <laughs> oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> uh, we've run out of time uh, for this edition of the uh, Ronnie and Alex get together. But uh, I know we'll see you in another two weeks. I mean, yes. you don't look like somebody who's going day after tomorrow. So. No, barring. Getting hit by a truck, I think I'm okay. And I never want to lose you. Never. You know? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you can find her on uh, timegoesby.net. That's her blog. It's about what it's like to live and in some ways what it's and like to, to die. To die. Yes. To die. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And I love, I, you know, I, I, she's looking great. I hope that we still have her for quite a while. Uh, and what she's contributing in, in telling about this journey, I think, is uh, invaluable for a lot of people. And uh, but the work she's been doing for years uh, with her blog about getting older and so on has been invaluable to a lot of people. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I accidentally left the um, uh, the what do you call it open the uh, uh, Zoom uh, room open. I usually I tell uh, to say uh, activate waiting room and then they all have to wait there until. And these guys, uh, I didn't do it, so these guys just hopped on, but they knew to mute themselves. And I thank you for that. And now you can unmute yourselves if you wish. Uh, and it's Charlie Wallace and it's Brian Ludwig. And What's up? we're going to get Rob Alfano in here. He's calling in. Uh, and is it calling? Do we consider this calling? Or am I using an old, old uh, uh, way of putting it? Uh, Rob? Communicating, I don't know. Huh? But uh, you seem to have changed your format slightly because uh, it's been a while since before. Since I remember you started your interview process from 10 until 10:30, yeah, and then from 10:30 on until 12, you know, I was operating under that mindset. Which yeah, is why I'm yeah, which is fine. Uh, and usually I'm I'm doing 15 minutes with most of my guests. Okay, it used to be 30. Yeah, uh, no, it was 25 actually. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I went to that shorter format. Going on at, at 10.30, I decided to just do 15 minutes. But with Ronnie, there's a lot to talk about. So I uh, Regarding you know. your interview you did with her, I have one thing to say, mm -hmm. is it, if I can say. Uh, a fundamental difference, I believe, there is between the two of us, Alex, mm -hmm. is that uh, you're, you're uh, afraid of the notion of what you were doing before you existed in this life and what will happen after you leave this life. Yeah. I am almost intoxicatingly intrigued by what I was doing before I was born and what will happen afterward. Really? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, what was happening before you were born? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Well, you know. Um, um, and it was nice because I didn't get sick. I didn't die. I didn't have to worry see, about dying. My, my, my or, problem is yeah, that I, I look at it as a possibility that it's just very boring. You know? You should listen to the comedian Doug Stanhope. He has a very similar, very it's more graphic and more you know 
yeah. comedic. But it's yeah. It was. Uh, let me see. Uh, 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 oh, there we got debris in here. Okay, and we got we yeah. All right. Okay, so we got about six people right now. Uh, oh, here here comes. Um, uh, yeah, I believe this is yes. Okay, it's Vernon. Hi, Vernon. How are you? Uh, he's here. Oh, and here comes Jeff Stein. And here comes Pico. Oh, forgot. Uh, Dunton's b something <laughs> girl. We know it's John Larkin, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Hello, John. How are you? Uh, what name are you using tonight? Are you there, John? Do you have your mic on? No, you don't. Neither does Bree, and neither does Jeff, and neither does uh, so. If you yeah, I changed my screen name in case that other Brian calls in. That way, oh, Mr. Ludwig. Yes, I, I have. Uh, I'm using my iPad. I don't think I can do background things. Well, I don't want you to do background things. Oh, Alex, that's Zoom. No, I don't Zoom like it. It's it's distracting. <laughs> no, and it, it and I got no, I got to tell you, it doesn't do a good job of it. Well, on some, you're right. Yeah. But I have a rule that I do not put a background unless I took the photo. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, that's fine. Because, I mean, I, I do it, but it just, you know, it looks terrible. It's really not very good. If I had a green screen here, I'd do it. But I don't have a green screen. Hello, Kevin. How you doing? <laughs> He's excited. Today is a holiday here. here. Uh, it's a holiday in Kuala Lumpur? Yeah, but that's why I can join you. It, what is the holiday? Um, that is a good question. <laughs> Let me look it up. Uh, uh, well, uh, if you have to look it up, it's not a very important holiday there. Oh, for that. Yeah, I think you're right. I, oh, it's Islamic New Year. Islamic New Year. Well, that, that would be, you know, that'd be big, wouldn't it? Happy birthday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what do they? How do they celebrate it? Fireworks, things like that, just like we do. Or? <clears throat> yeah, there'll be fireworks tonight. I won't be able to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've had fireworks go going off in this neighborhood for three months now. <laughs> That's true. Mm. You had them up where you well, were too, right, Jeff? No, I don't get a lot of noise. You don't get a lot of noise. Well, let me yeah. move into your name. I'm getting, I find there are parts of me that are getting to be a real old man. Like, I want my quiet, you know? It's too noisy out there. Because I live in a neighborhood where there are always sirens and uh, there are always people yelling and screaming on street corners and crap like that, you know, so <laughs> what have you. Um, any of you guys watching the, uh, the uh, convention at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, th Only I, think, I think it's very it's been very well kind of, kind of, there we go uh it's being very well done i think you know all things considered for a virtual uh uh thing uh it seems to be working okay yeah here comes uh here comes phil it Hello, says phil. that uh, during this time muslims are forbidden to fight it is a time of mourning and peace for the this uh this month it says this month is considered most sacred of all besides the month of Ramadan. Well, so that would be so, a, it would be a good time for Trump to attack. <clears throat> Apparently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called Awal Muharram. Now, this is not Ramadan. No. 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 <laughs> Ramadan, I think, is somewhere around October? No, no. November? That's usually May, June, or July. Oh, really? Ish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It can even be April, May, June, that time. Is the whole month Ramadan? Yeah. Now, is everything shut down during Ramadan? No, no, is, oh, no. Okay. No, because, I mean, even in Dubai, that's not true. In Sharjah, a little bit more so. Depends on where you are. Yeah, but in Malaysia, yeah. remember, we have three or four different cultures here mm -hmm. uh, that vie for attention. So, uh, no. Oh, it's It's very easy to find pork products around here because, you know, certain percentage of the population is Chinese. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's yeah. It's easy to find Indian food because a certain percentage of the population is Indian. All right. Well, happy. Uh, but I will tell you <clears throat> one thing, Alex. Uh, I have uh, one of my <laughs> friends posted uh, the other day. She moved into a uh, apartment uh, situation where there were 
you know, three others. She became the fourth roommate. Mm -hmm. When the landlord found out that she was uh, of mixed heritage, I think she's um, Malay Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, the landlord told them all to get out because they only want to rent to Chinese. Oh, really? And it's it's a direct message. We only want to rent to Chinese. Please clear your things. Mm -hmm. We'll be Is over tomorrow at eleven to, to discuss it. No, but I <clears throat> I just thought that was it. I said in the states, if a landlord directly told you he didn't want to rent you because of your race, there'd be a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be a big problem. Well, anyway, uh, so um, um, anybody watch any of the? Uh, have you been watching it, Rob? Have you been watching the Democratic convention? No, 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 just not been, at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, neither have I. Yeah, I have been watching. Fifteen minutes or so. What was funny is Marjorie was watching Obama give his speech just now. She couldn't get to sleep, so she decided she'd watch Obama give the speech. And then she was also online seeing what Trump was tweeting. And, I mean, just, he was constantly tweeting through the whole speech. I mean, you know, it's just, I don't know, there's a time to just back off, take, take, take a deep breath, let everybody else have their time and their time in the sun. Your time will be next week. All right? You know, but this constant tweeting when something like this is going on and complaining, oh, uh, uh, tr uh, yes, oh, Barack Obama spied on my uh, ca my uh, 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 campaign, which is not what he did. He was protecting his campaign, but little does he realize that. So anyway, she was watching it and watching the tweeting at the same time, said it was very interesting, you know. Uh, let me see here. Well, we should be joined by Brian Neary here. I just pushed admit. So where is we he? do have an interesting story uh, developing in Thailand, neighboring Thailand. Maybe, uh, maybe Richard will call in. Uh, has yeah. he ever used Zoom before? Uh, uh, but uh, there's a lot of protests occurring. It's really starting to gain momentum against not only the leadership, but the monarchy. There is someplace else that there's a problem. Maybe, no, it wasn't Thailand. Belarus. 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 Yeah. Yes. yeah. Belarus. <clears throat> big, uh, big uh, uh, insurgency in Belarus. Uh, they don't like the government. They don't like the guy, the way it's being run. They say it's uh, it's corrupt, and they're all marching in the streets. And the strong arm leader of the country is saying, "If you don't stop, there's going to be trouble." Oh boy, Bill, you got to unmute your huh your your thing. Uh, uh, yeah, that Thai government uh, uh, took over by coup in 2014, so they haven't been around very long. Is that is that right, Bree? Yeah, that's a, it happens a, a lot. Um, you know, it, it, it used to be that was a time when you'd try to book your uh, vacation because the rates would go down <laughs> anytime there's a coup. No, uh, one time I went yeah. at the beach to myself, I think it was 2007. But yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that one of the interesting stories, the Thai king last month, you know, during COVID, uh, the story was that he was holed up in a, uh, five-star hotel in Germany with 20 concubines uh, having his way. He rented the whole hotel. So, you know, meanwhile, back in Thailand, you know, the COVID is there and growing, and he's uh, throwing his cash around wow. uh, in Germany. Well, that's the way things go. That's what happens in other countries, and sometimes it even seems to be happening here now. So, yeah. you know. Hubris is a no short supply in leadership. That's for damn sure. That's right. That's right. Well, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, I think, is the term. And, oh, uh, yeah. You what know. you just said, it serves as a ringing endorsement for term limits and campaign finance. Oh, reform. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, we keep, listen, ever since I was a kid, we keep kept talking about that. Okay? Mm -hmm. it's been They've been talking about that forever. They've been talking about getting rid of the electoral college for, yeah. you know, ever since I was a kid. Uh, because they don't see any benefit in it, and uh, yet nobody ever does anything about it. So somebody must benefit from have. it, huh? Fifteen states have. Well, they've done that. You're talking, Vernon. You're talking about the thing where they say whoever wins national popular vote interstate compact. Fifteen states in the District of Columbia have passed it, oh, okay. and they only need about eighty more electoral votes when it kicks mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And that would be um, if whoever I'm wins surprised. the popular. Is California vote. involved in that? Yes. Okay. So it's whoever wins the popular vote 
they then have all their electors vote for. Are right? any of those right. states battleground states? Right. Well, some of them are. Yeah, like Michigan. Michigan yeah. is yeah. has has that in uh, the legislature, and now that they have a Democratic governor, they'll probably pass it. But Michigan by itself will not put it over the top. Right. Right. Mm. So anyway. It's, uh, It'll be interesting. That's for damn sure. You know, and to, as I say, Obama spoke tonight, and um, I guess uh, uh, Kamala Harris is going to uh, accept she's her She's talking right now. Yeah, she's accepting her nomination. Yeah. Uh, That's finished. Oh, damn, I should watch it. So, well, <laughs> yeah, damn, watch. you should watch it. Yeah. I've got it on DVR, so I can watch it later. Mm -hmm. well, watch on YouTube, gonna, man. Yeah. Melania is going to talk at the convention next week. <laughs> An em empty classroom at the, at the Trump University. Whose speech is she going <laughs> to yeah. yeah, whose speech is she going to uh, copy? Where, where she's going to say, I hope that we, we our classrooms can be full of people searching for fortunes in real estate. That'd be best. Yes. <laughs> I got advance notice. Our speech starts four score and seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Phil, what are we? Are we a royal flush or are we a jackpot? He just left. <laughs> oh, we left. Yeah, they're going to sample 12. 12, 12 is a jackpot, I think. It is yeah. a jackpot. Okay. It's well, jackpot. I'll, I'll, I'll put that up there. There we go. Uh, Boom. So, yeah. Cheesy humor. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to see. I have things out of focus. Try yeah. to focus on something else. Um, yeah, we have all, all, the, all the fires that are coming through really bad. Well, this morning, you can smell it really bad, and then ash is falling like snow over here. Wow. Uh, uh, we should see it through the sky. Santa Cruz yeah. is burning down. Yeah, between yeah. Uh, between Kevin and I, there's a big fire, and then over uh, east side San Jose, there's a big fire in those hills where Mount Hamilton is. Is that a, is that a fire going on there, Kevin? Yeah, it's really bad. That's all the sun we saw all day today. That's all we got. Really? Oh, oh, I thought you were showing something out your window. That's a picture. No, that's you took. that's what was out the window all day. We didn't get any sun today at all. There's yeah. four fires around us today. Yeah, our yeah. sports guy tonight didn't do his show because he said they might be made to move out any minute. He lives up yeah. in uh, up in Napa, I think. Yeah, a lot of evacuations. Yeah, we got Santa Cruz, three of them in Monterey, and one in Salinas. What is, is this? The apocalypse that's going on here? Oh, I mean, between like, COVID, everything's covered with ash down here. No, I told you, like slow snowing. burn. It's a it, slow burn to the end of the world. It, it doesn't happen all at once. It, it doesn't happen Slowly. all at once. Boy, oh boy. But what happened to the murder <laughs> hornets? Mm -hmm. the, the murder hornets. Yeah, the murder hornet, hornets are like fifth in line behind all this other stuff. You know, <laughs> I think uh, Trump is one step ahead of the murder hornets. You know, so. yeah. Wait, Phil, what, are you having trouble with your mic? Uh, yeah. oh, they, no. Uh, uh, the Dems will use the murder hornets once they need them. Right now, you know, they've got a couple of other disasters that they're, uh, uh, you know, you got the post office. Uh, you know, you know, if the post office thing goes away, then they'll just they'll pull in the murder hornet. Well, yeah, that, what that we, dude that's running the post office, he's a major stockholder in about five asshole. different companies that fucking compete with the post office. It being, and, yeah, and since when did the post office supposed to show a profit? You know, that's a it's a fucking service. It was never run as a thing for profit, and it would, but but it always stayed ahead of the the curve when it came to. You know, making money, uh, so uh, they could keep services going. Keep they need to redepartmentalize the post office. Is what they yeah. yeah, they said yeah. undo exactly. fifty years of bad legislation. Go yeah. back to like nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They when they didn't Trump buy, what were you saying, didn't Brian? Trump take Brian, 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 post office place. Wait, Brian Neary was saying something. But I was just saying that they show all the you know all the loss of you know revenue or whatever, but. That's fine. If they're putting somebody in there to change that, that's fine. But again, just like Trump, where's the plan? They just start pulling things and doing all this stuff, and we know why. But, you know, if they're going to revamp it and, yeah, well, and but, but, paint but, it, where's but, the plan? But the idiot the the idiot that Trump is, he didn't know how to, to, to finesse the situation. What he did was start complaining about how we can't have mail-in ballots because blah, 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 blah. And then he comes along, and this guy, who's his big buddy, you know, he's his big donor— um, decides that he's going to just make it m even more efficient, inefficient than it is already. And uh, those two things in combination look like they were a conspiracy to s subvert the vote. You know, yes, Phil. 
What if they raise the price to Amazon? Amazon's one of their biggest users, I would think. Uh, and so if they raise the price, then, well, then let me let me explain something to you. We're losing like two dollars a. Let me explain something to you, Phil. The post office, USPS, uh, bids for Amazon's uh, business just like any of the other companies, FedEx, whatever, uh, UPS. The UPS um, What's that other one? The fast one they got. Does it, DHL. Does it, 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 they DHL. don't use DHL. They don't use DHL, I don't think. But anyway. DHL only delivers international here. Yeah. 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 But anyway, the point is that um, uh, they have to bid like any of these other companies. So if their bidding is equal to that of Amazon and whatever, then that's the price that the post office is giving them. It's not a question of that they're suddenly giving them a low price, and they're doing it because they have to compete with all these other organizations for the bidding of the contracts. That's all. You know, I learned in business that if you sell for less than it costs you to, to do it, eventually you're going to run out of money and go out of business. Well, I don't so You think know why the post office is running out of business, though, Phil? Do you know why the post office is running out of money? Uh, yeah, it's retirement and uh, yeah, they had they had to pre-pay for seventy-five years in advance of every person in the retirement plan, and that was passed by the Republicans when they, but right before they lost control of the House in two thousand and six. Well, so why is that, that reason? Why isn't that repealed? <laughs> Good question. Because well, Mitch McConnell won't let them vote on it. Yeah. Is it the House that has to vote on it? The House has passed it, but Mitch McConnell yeah. won't bring it up for a vote. Mm. The problem mm. is that, that son of a bitch needs Obama to only had danger. two years where he had the Senate. What? Obama only had two years where he had the Senate. Mm -hmm. And they I didn't know because they were working on health care. And by uh, the time 2010 came around, the Republicans took over the Senate. Yep. Yeah, that's when the, the Tea Party uh, flexed their muscle. You better break out the murder hornets. Uh, is that your new? Uh -huh. is, that, is that? Ha uh -huh. ha ha! Is that your uh -huh. new joke? Look Phil? at me! Look at me rolling on the floor with laughter, Phil. Ha ha! Uh, I, Vernon, I you know, knowing you as I do now, I don't think you ever laugh. Hey, listen, knock sure, it, either. knock it off. He's a prostate cancer buddy along with you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we we're yeah. the three guys with bum prostates. Okay. Hey, three amigos. I, I don't even have a prostate. You don't have one. We got to keep ours. Yeah. But I'm peeing lately after this radiation like I still have a prostate that's, uh, you know, real large. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. Like 10 times, 12 times a night. Really? Uh, yeah. It's, wow. it, it's just an effect of the uh, radiation. But I, I, I get up about once a night. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, right now, it's every hour. The older you get, folks, the more you get up to go to the bathroom. Uh, y yes, Brian. I wanted to add Bloodway. to what uh, Mr. Wallace said earlier. I don't think it was two years. I think it was more like a year and a half because that sore losing son of a bitch, Norm Coleman, wouldn't concede to Al Franken. Right. He fought that. It wasn't until like July before. I think so, yeah. It was oh, and and that's how it got Let's passed, go. you're saying? No, that, that, so they didn't really have they didn't really have uh, two full years with both the House and House and the Senate because yeah. we didn't have well, no, but what are we talking about here? The post office or what are we No, I, no, why said why wasn't that repealed? Uh, and that's because he really only had a year and a half to repeal it and they were working on health care. Right. Okay. All why right. can't you do more than one thing at a time? Don't we all? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, why is it yeah. that it takes I mean, come on. Really? One thing at a time? It took a I year agree. and a half to well, do? Well, we should get the business of the country taken care of, you know? I think it should be streamlined. You know what I think? I will give Mitch McConnell, that turtle boy looking motherfucker, this much credit. It, we can hit him back if, we, if, the, if uh, the Democrats win control back of the Senate, which I hope to Christ they do. Um, we can hit him back by, you know, streamlining the uh, debating process by not allowing the filibuster. Hey, we're playing yeah. by your rules, you turtle boy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Eat it, motherfucker. Yeah. It's yeah. a line item veto. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, that's how, how many days now? 99 days till the election, something like that? Oh, that's like 80 less than that. Oh, it's more, less than that. Oh, really? How many? Anybody know? 
Uh, it's closer uh, to 80, I think. Yeah, yeah 76. Yeah. yeah, and then it'll be another 50 days after that until we finally settle who wins it because Trump will probably fight it tooth and nail. I'm sure we'll see all the white supremacists and white separatists all going all ape shit. It's maybe be a lot maybe of riots. acts of domestic terrorism what, what, in the process. be a lot of riots. It, it, what? I hope I meet one of them too. Right wing rioting, you mean? Yeah. All kind, anybody, the Trump supporter riots because he'll gin them up even further. It's a yeah. fix. So, so far, it's only left wing riots that. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I have. Oh, Rob, uh, now, now they're beating up their own, you know, some guy. In what was Port that thing about? What's that? What's that? Uh, uh, oh, yes, Jeff. I'm curious as to if Trump says, I want to stay, forget about this. This stuff is all bullshit. Is it ultimately going to be the army and the Navy who actually take him out? Would the them Secret out? Service just take, take him out? Secret Service Alex, and maybe the U.S. Marshals. Marshals. Yeah, the Marshals, Secret Service. Secret Service. Look, buddy, you don't have to go home, but, but, but you can't you know, stay the, here. There's, there's a lot he can do. He, there's a lot he can do in the meantime yeah, by yeah. fighting it, by uh, saying we're going to the Supreme Court with this and blah, 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 oh, He's blah, got blah. Uh, yeah. from November to January 20th. Uh, listen, I'm afraid that if he loses, what he's going to do to get even with this country for those two and a half months that yeah, he's still president, him. you know. Yeah. Oh, lame no duck. question. A lame duck Trump. Uh, I wonder how dangerous a lame duck Trump will be. Uh, That's what I've been saying about a lame duck Trump president. I mean, if he, if he wins, if he doesn't care what people think anymore, what will he pull? Yeah. Alex and Rob, I have an idea. Every, every prisoner president. in the system. Let me ask Robert this. Robert, since you're the, the real uh, political wonk around here. Oh, my. Uh, um, how do you think it's looking all the way around? How would you handicap the race? I mean, uh, if you, putting aside the fact that you're to the left and all of that, I mean, yeah, how, would you, how, how would you handicap it? Here's what I trust. I trust. I think you were a gambler at one time, weren't you? Yeah, 38 years. Yeah, so you, you, uh, how, how do you handicap this? I didn't this see race? it as gambling because it was, it was a, a method that, that won fairly consistently. Well, but you know, you, can either, you case, can either gamble that way or go into the stock market. Yeah, I know. was betting against other people, not against the house. You were a functional gambler. <laughs> um, I trust a website run by a man named Nate Silver who runs a website called 538. And yeah. what Nate Silver does, he used to be a, a writer for a, a magazine and website called Baseball Prospectus. He's statistical mm -hmm. guru of sorts. And yeah. 538, what they do is they don't poll. What they do is they do an amalgamation of all the polls that are respected. Mm -hmm. And based on that, he gives probability of the election. For example... Um, he said back in 2016 that Hillary Clinton had a 62% chance of winning. Now, that's certainly not a lock. You know, that left room, plenty of room for her to lose. In this particular case right now, he handicaps it as 73% for Biden. Again, that's not a lock, but it's about as close to... Uh, safe as you're generally going to see in a presidential election based mm. on historical patterns. Now, uh, so how, how so he came out saying with Hillary what, that she was going to win or that it was not a, a lock? He said that she had a 62% probability of winning. He mm -hmm. said that for sure she would win the popular vote by between two and a half million and three million, which he, which he, he nailed. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the Electoral College, he was less sanguine about her chances and said it was about 62 percent. Now, you know, you don't rush out and bet at even odds something that's only got a 62 percent chance of winning. It's certainly nothing to put your mortgage on. Mm -hmm. She had a better than even chance of winning, but it was certainly not, you know, a, a lock sure thing. Uh, he feels that Biden is more safe at this moment, he changes this day to day based on new evidence, new polling. Mm -hmm. He feels that Biden is far safer than Hillary was at, at the end of 2016's campaigns. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, so um, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I know that Nate Silver is very good at what he does. Uh, and uh, 
but it, it um, it's still it's not a lock. You know, nothing is in life. I, I, I don't think anybody person. would get a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, it's, and it's nothing a Democratic on Earth national elect, uh, convention right now. Wait till next week. Yeah. Well, it, what We're happens is there's always a bump after the convention. We haven't yeah. seen the convention bump yet. Okay. Who's uh, producing the Trump thing? Uh, is that McCluskey's? Uh, I don't know who is, to be honest with you, but they got going on this awfully late in the game. So I don't know if it's going to be as slickly produced as the Democrats have pulled off. The Democrats have said three months ago, four months ago, we're not going to do a traditional convention because of COVID. Uh, the, as you know, Trump was running around. He got Jacksonville, Florida, and he got, what is it? Was, is this Charlottesville? Charlotte. Charlotte, uh, where he was going to do it. And it went back and forth and up and down. And it wasn't until about maybe three, four weeks ago that they said, oh, well, we're going to do a virtual one. Well, it's a little late in the game to get a virtual one going, and the Democrats had already been producing all their set pieces and so on. And I think they did a very good job of it. I don't know if you like it as much as you like seeing all the balloons dropping and the people cheering and making noise and doing things like that, but uh, nevertheless, I, I think it, it, it's very well done. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Democrat and because I'm uh, to the left. I'm saying it because, really, I look at it as a media person who says, good job. Yes, uh, Brian. Yeah. And do you think that they're able to make their point a lot better not being in that big arena? Because, you know, they, they, they go into depth and have this nice production about sh school shootings by climate change, and they really get their point over, I think, than they do when they have all those people and they're just trying to get the crowd going and going and going. They can really say their point, and they have a lot of and time to get this together. I, I think it's very slickly done, and I think what makes it slickly done is I think they have the best minds in the business putting these things together, uh, and I think it's because there is such an urgency by the Democrats and by Democratic supporters to get this guy out of office. And by Republicans. By, and, by, and by a lot of Republicans, too, to get this guy out of office. I mean, look who, who's done the most damage to Trump is, uh, is the Lincoln Project. They put out an ad every single day that everybody looks forward to. Yes, Robert? I, I'd like to make the point that I started to talk to Tony about last night, and that is I, I have a feeling that conventions at this point are nothing but persuasion bias, where... Democratic-leaning individuals watch the Democratic convention. Republican-leaning individuals watch the Republican convention. I really doubt that there are gods of people out there yeah. who are on the fence. I think the average, I think 98%, just to come up with a number of people, know now what they're going to do in November. And I don't think much of whoever speaks on either side is going to make somebody say, shit, I hadn't thought of that. Let me jump sides. Right. It's exactly. more polarized now than it's ever been in our nation's history. And I don't see it changing much by convention. But there, is, there are those people who are in the middle. I mean, there are people who uh, I've heard a lot of uh, interviews with people say they know people, they've talked to people who, who voted for Trump because they felt, well, you know, how bad can he be? And then they now know how bad he can be, and they're not going to vote for Trump again. But they're not on the yeah. fence. They've already been convinced that they're going to change sides for this election. Also, Hillary was a terrible candidate. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 Biden, oh, yeah. Biden is a seasoned pro at this, you know? And I think he presents himself as very likable. I mean, you may not agree with his politics, but I mean, even Phil, Phil, do you don't you, do you find Biden likable? Uh, I, I, I think he's um, he's over the hill. You know, no, 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 no. I'm period. asking about is he likable? Uh, he's no. I mean, when you hear him uh, unscripted, he's not likable. Well, he no. wants to pull uh, supporters out no, into no, the no, back. No. Uh, he wants to, you know, do push-ups against the guy. He He's not likable. He's a dog face, uh, face pony soldier. I mean, he is not likable. He, he is, yeah, he's, he's despicable, actually. So he's no. as despicable as um, as Trump is, who uh, supports this 
um, Islamophobe uh, candidate who's running for Congress in Florida. And what is it? What is this QAnon? I, is, it, is it called QAnon? Yeah, she's been thrown off of every social media platform. She's that's, been. That's Laura Loomer. There she's you from, go. That's her name. She's and from the Alex Jones he, show. Yeah, exactly. And Trump is saying congratulations on a great win. That's yeah, you're going to be a star. Well, but she believes oh, in. Not is, she believes in in QAnon. Is it QAnon? Is that how it's yeah, yeah, pronounced? QAnon, yeah. Which no, that's uh, the other one. Well, she's a QAnon too. Uh, no, but, but which, the other one, George, is the QAnon. Oh, the one. QAnon. She he's supporting her too. Yeah, and yeah. she believes he said, he said, she believes that it's all satanic, and she was one of the ones that actually believed there was, in fact, a sex ring run by Hillary Clinton in the yeah, basement yeah. of a pizza yeah. parlor this that didn't have despicable. a basement. Yeah. I tell you, that's if, despicable. If that's Hillary, the definition of despicable. You if thought Hillary Clinton hard. was running a sex ring, it wouldn't be a very good one. I wouldn't want to go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Mm. You see the pictures of uh, Bill Clinton, uh, you know, on the uh, Lolita Express, getting a massage. What? Uh, yeah, I uh, heard of it. Yeah, it's all uh, hearsay. Uh, Phil, no, they, Phil, I got news for you. Bill Clinton isn't running for president. Yeah. So uh, why why even bring yes. that? So why even why even bring that up? I asked if you saw the photos because it no. was uh, relevant to what you. What I don't know. I don't know. I don't no, know about the photos. It's not relevant. We're talking, about, it's not we're relevant. Talk, we're talking about the current president of the United uh, States. You were talking about Hillary Clinton and uh, the uh, oh. sex ring. That's what I. Well, actually, well what does Bill, that have to do with him getting a massage? He was. I saw the fucking picture. No, I didn't see the fucking picture, Phil. Okay. I think we can all stipulate that Clinton was a perv, but he was a better president than Trump. Uh, he did a good job economically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I just, I think Biden's a likable guy. I think to the most of the public, uh, not you, Phil, but the rest of the public, I think he comes across as as somewhat genuine and nice. You know, and and soft spoken. Uh, so, you know, it's just that the way somebody delivers the message is more important to you than the message. <laughs> Congratulations, Loomis, whatever her name is. Congratulations. Good campaign. There's yeah. the message. Good people tell me, on tell me. Sides. All right. You know, tell me what he really means there, Phil. It means that this you're always... other person that would support him and his, oh, a racist. his agenda. And, and a racist his, and a homophobe. And everybody's and a, a racist. Everybody's that's what a homophobe. she's self-proclaimed. Yeah. She is self-proclaimed. Well, uh, Phil, we same. live in a society Alex, today. Dude, we live in a society. Phil, we live in a society today where you're not allowed to be a racist and you're not allowed to be a sexist and you're not allowed to be a homophobe because all those things are wrong and inhumane. So a broadcaster, I think tonight's broadcast on... Uh, Reds baseball. Tom Brennan or yes. I, I know Brenneman. Brenneman. I know that right. uh, he he went on the air and he's yeah. he, in the commercial. They came back a couple of seconds early. His mic was hot and he said something about uh, a place that was a big uh, a fag hangout or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he was taken off city. the air. Yeah, uh, right. City. And he was on the air, and he did, I think, I, by the time it, it got all of its momentum on social media, mm -hmm. they copied it all over the place. He actually had a, he couldn't finish the game. He, he said, I, he's, he said I, I'm sorry, I, that's not who I am and all this stuff. Well, and apparently he, it is who he is. But it is oh, who you are. <laughs> right. But that's what I mean. It, it's, it's amazing. You know, this is not the time for those kinds he'll, of He'll get his job back once he goes to some sensitivity training. Maybe. It, it, you know, what are you, what are you holding up there, Bree? Because this is awesome. It's a history of rum course. I got to take this three week seminar starting September 9th. Well, thanks for, thanks for changing the subject. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of all this political that had, stuff. That had plenty to do with Hillary Clinton. What? That was, that was a good segue. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, it... it, it um, what I, is everybody's favorite poison? I'm a rum man. Well, why don't you go on Jack's show and ask that question? Because that's the kind yeah, of topic he we'll would do. About that later. Yeah, he okay. would do that on his show. 
I could care less. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's yes, yes, here? yes, Mr. Ludwig. Yeah, I'll be happy to answer that question that you asked Phil. Yeah. Do I find Joe Biden likable? Mm -hmm. And I'll give you my reason as to why I absolutely do not find the man likable. Good. Or Tell his VP candidate. Reason one, he shits on millennials. If you go back into the archives, is what he said. Oh, as far as the, I'm kind of paraphrasing here uh, because I don't remember word for word what he said. Mm. But the question okay. was asked about uh, millennials having less than their parents to do, being the first man. And his uh, his his response was to that reporter, "It's for the millennial plight. Give me a break." And then, then he starts to and he starts to go on about how uh, they don't know what hardship is. They don't know. This is also the same man who says. I do not think health care is a right. I will, and he said it more than once. He said it more than twice, in fact. I will not vote for. Well, uh, I, don't, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree with him on that basic statement. I don't think that it's a right either. But I think it is a right we should be given. As for okay. Kamala Harris, you may find her fuckable, Alex. But the thing is, if you uh, if you hold a joint, especially if you're African American and from that area if you're from california or whatnot god help you if you get prosecuted by her because she'll not only throw she'll not only throw you in the jail cell she'll, she'll throw away the fucking key mm -hmm. it's in and as far as her okay so who do you uh, want me to who do you want me to vote for well there's more than two parties there's always more who than do you want me to vote who do you want me to vote for but before you tell me who to vote for, vote for the green party give me somebody who can green win party's not running. okay Give me somebody who can Green win. Green Party's not running. They're not well, running? The choice between Attila the Hun and Adolf Hitler, no, and one's on. more winnable than the other? Uh, uh, this the is not Attila the Hun. This is not, this is not Attila the Hun. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm using Hitler. hyperbole to make Yeah, well, you are using hyperbole, and it doesn't make for a very good it argument. It doesn't make a good argument. Yeah. It, it really doesn't. Anybody, anybody that doesn't think there's any, that there's any difference between the Democrats and the Republicans now, it's just not paying attention to what's happening in this fucking country. And I'm not, and look, look, I will, uh, I will agree with Brian to this extent, and I said it for years. I Hawkins? said oh. there is no real difference between the two parties because they're all fighting to maintain the same system. Okay, they're sponsored by many of the same donors too. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me finish what I'm saying. They're all they're all I, I mean, often Hawkins. said they're all fighting to maintain the same system. Um, and anybody who wants to change the system doesn't really have a chance. Okay, so I agree with you on that, Brian. That's right. But that, given the situation we have right now, with a man who has literally destroyed this country, I think you, you just have to bite the bullet and say, hey, I'm going with the, with the, uh, with the, with the girl I brought. You know? I don't argue that he's destroying the country, but he's had assistance with over 50 years of deindustrialization and marginalization. Uh, he from both parties. No, actually, no actually, what, what actually what he took advantage of was the decline of this country under um, uh, uh, I don't know what that is, Bree. Uh, uh, the Green Party. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they you said they're not running this year. They so, are. Yes. Oh, they are. Not okay. the Hawkins Walker. Uh, uh, he also has a African American uh, okay. woman as vice president. Let me finish what I was saying. So, I mean, I I agree that they're all fighting to maintain the same system. They just have a different idea of how that system should be operated. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're fighting for the soul of this country. We're fighting for the sanctity of this country. I don't think Joe Biden will obliterate this society. I think Donald Trump with another term has a good chance of making sure America never comes back. Yes, Charlie, and you've got what a do lot you think? More you have, to lose because you, of your age. Yes. No. And I have a lot have more a to get I have a lot more to gain because of my age because I might be dead before I can see what he does. Uh, the effects of what he does. Charlie, you've been quiet tonight. You want to say something? Well, I mean it, to me, it, it's a no-brainer. I'm sorry. There's only one. There's two people that have a chance to win. I don't care who you want to bring up. Anybody else besides Biden or Trump is not going to be president. So we're either going to have Joe Biden or you're going to have Donald Trump, and it's a no-brainer. I don't care how horrible you think Joe Biden is. He is nowhere near as horrible as Donald Trump. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a sad state of affairs that that's the way you vote yeah. in this country, but it is a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Bree is a, a lot of. Has a lot of what 
a lot of what Donald Trump does mm -hmm. is just theater. You know, people get upset about things he says, but you know, he doesn't he doesn't always enact things. Okay, so right now, did, what happened to Roe v. Wade? It should be overturned right now. I mean, I mean, what what has you know? A lot of what he does is rhetoric, and people fall for it all the time. Yeah. And well, I, don't, I, I think I, if you it, give it, Trump four more it, years, it, it, AOC yeah. could win yeah, well, in the next oh, election. Uh, uh, let me just say this. Uh, let election. me say this. If I if I want if I want election. theater. Uh, I'm going to go to the movies. I don't like okay. AOC either. I think both sides, left and right at the extreme, are a mistake for this country. I, I feel at, at a certain point, point, I feel I feel differently about AOC. I just think I don't she's, like her. I just think she isn't seasoned. She's dangerous. He's and so is Bernie Sanders dangerous. Uh, our I, system is not no different than the other side. Although I, I, Trump no, I, is, I, is not as uh, okay. Here's how civil. here's how Bernie Sanders is dangerous. Is he's a spoiler? Okay. Um, uh, uh, and, and by the way, Bernie Sanders engendered all the things that I kind of believe in. All right. But he, uh, I don't know, something about him. I didn't buy his genuine. Too radical. You're never going to get middle America. Well, no, you're, who's never. Gonna, you, you're never going to get them to vote for him. Until you don't have a candidate to try and scare people off from a guy by, like Bernie Sanders by saying he's too far to the left, he's a socialist. But he also says he's a socialist. Yes, uh, 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 Charlie. Yeah, I disagree with Bray about Trump being just theater because... There are 170,000 dead Americans because of his theater. Right. There are thousands, tens of thousands of yeah. kids in cages at the border because of his theater. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that's true. remember, I, I believe that Biden did not want the airlines to close down from China, which is one of the first moves that Trump made. So, you know, I'm not laying all those at Trump's yeah, but that feet. Wasn't, that I do wasn't, agree that, that, that he has that, not that, had a plan. Bree, Bree, he he did China because he wanted to get even with China. What he should have yeah. been doing was also closing down the East Coast, too. That's what brought it all into New York. Okay? So, and I after, mean, you know, he only closed it down because he wanted to get after them. Yes, John? Um, you know, Ber Bernie and AOC, they may not have won, but they dr they dragged the Democratic Party to the left. That's true. So, you know, that's that's the that's how the, that's how the system works. You know. Right. Yeah. I mean, you've always got to have somebody who's a little uh, out there, right? To to make the center seem a little more centered. <laughs> you know. Right. The, Absolutely. You, right. You know. Yeah. So no. what is what's? Give me one policy that's radical that Bernie has. Uh, Just, I don't. I don't find. Uh, you know, his stand. This, Medicare for all. Yeah, that's everything. Radical. Medicare. For, most Americans uh, want that. Medicare for that all. Is most of your policies, oh. Americans want. Oh, that, that is, is not that true. true. Seventy percent of Amer even the majority of Republicans want Medicare yeah. for all. Yes, sir. So, so I think I vote for Biden. Why Harris, like he, for the that system. is absolutely right. Then well, why the doesn't it happen? Want it. Let the system because because, because the corporations control it. No, the they control the, the politicians. Fail. They don't. We don't get to vote what the people want. We get vote to what the pump, what the corporations want. Wait a minute. Want. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's right, Charlie. People, remember, Charlie? And so, you're saying, <laughs> so you're saying that the corporations are controlling the candidates or the president and and the Congress? Yes, and the sir. Yes. That's exactly. Okay. Right. Who do you think controls right. Mitch McConnell? Mm -hmm. well, Absolutely. So then right. why would we had a beginning? Why did we, when we had a beginning to health care? I mean, Obamacare was far from perfect, but why, when we had a beginning to it, did it get torn apart? Because well, the corporations, the, but they, the no, 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 no. companies didn't want but, it. Did that Marco might Rubio. be true, but that wouldn't be true if the Democrats got in, right? So they lost, they lost the House and the Senate, right? Why? Because of a lot of it had to do with Obamacare. Robert Those had his hand up. People voting. Those are people voting. That's not corporations. Robert had his hand up. I'll give you a great example. Medicare is unable to negotiate drug prices. Yeah. It's, they're unable to do so by law. by law. You know who wrote? Do you know who wrote the actual bill? The insurance companies, lobbyists. Yeah. They admit yeah. as much. In many cases, laws aren't written by the people who sponsor them. They're written by the corporations who lobby. The yeah, do you representatives me, yeah. and senators and say this is what you need to do. Do you want me to tell and you? And even yeah. write the verbiage. Most of do the you want me to tell you what? 
most of the congressmen they don't even know, or the they don't even know what the hell they're voting on. They they yeah. don't read that shit. Let me tell you something that's really a piece of crap. Okay, Marjorie, when she went to have, uh, she had, gets a shot every now and then uh, for her spine, uh, about every six months uh, to uh, deaden it or whatever. Okay, it's a spinal. Um, this time before she did it, she had to go into their offices and get a COVID test before they would operate on her. That's given procedure now for operations. So she goes in, she gets a test. She gets a bill for the COVID test <laughs> for $300 Jesus. for a COVID test. Where yeah. you can walk up the street. Ryan, and you're, ripping it, you're ripping us off. It, no, it's it, not mine. <laughs> well, what happened was her 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 um, uh, doctor forgot to say, oh, well, she's insured, so they re-put it in. But 300 bucks, they had the gall to charge 300 bucks for sticking a goddamn Q-tip up your nose? Are you <laughs> kidding me? And how much does it cost, Brian, for them to process those things? I can't say how much, but it's a third of that cost of the, what you just said. Yeah. I mean, that's how much ours sell for. That's yeah. just how, the test. How, how long did it take them to get the uh, results? Uh, the next day. Oh, okay. I, I guess maybe they did it in their offices or something. I don't know, but they got it back fast. But the thing was, I mean, 300 bucks for a test that anybody who gets it should just get it for free. If I go up the street to get it, it's free. You know, the Nobody state has state. to pay for it, Alex. It's not nothing's free. It, it, it costs uh, it costs Brian's company almost a hundred dollars to make one of those tests. Somebody's got to pay for it. Where we disagree, like you can like people like get the test. Where we disagree, well, I agree with you. Somebody has to pay for it. Where we disagree is where that money comes from. I exactly. Think a little less on and, and, you also, can and, get and also also how much they're charging. Right. I mean, come on, yeah. you know. Um, uh, uh, Phil just had uh, what do you what do you have what do they do to you this time? It gave you radiation treatments, right? Yeah, it was maybe thirty thousand a month. Thirty thousand. Isn't a month. that ridiculous? What do you mean thirty thousand? Mine obnoxious. was mine for my radiation that you got because that was on one half of what they did to me. I think it came out to forty five thousand dollars, and well, then my seven. then the seeds the seeds uh, were another uh, sixty. Yeah. yeah, but I had seven weeks, five days a week of uh, radiation. Uh, you had five treatments uh, of radiation. Yeah, but it isn't a matter of how much time they spend on you. Well, you, yeah. you're on that machine for seven, eight minutes uh, every day, and they're, and they're pushing people through that machine like clockwork all day long. And, but the machine's expensive. Uh, it was this is a Varian uh, True Beam linear accelerator and i i bet you they, they cost millions so are bombs expensive yeah let's build a few yeah, exactly. less of those a jet airplane costs almost a billion dollars but the point the point is the point is the point that i'm trying to make here is that uh um uh, you know like my insurance company uh sag after they, they're not ending the plan because they said they're they're losing money on it uh, and um, so they're going to another system. I have until September of next year to go to this other plan, which they say won't cost me any more than this one's costing. But What's the, the difference the, in coverage? Did they tell you? Supposedly, I can scale it up or down in any way I want it. So, so you can pay a little bit more. I I can probably pay less. Uh, I can probably make it so I get less of a copay, for instance. Uh, 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 you know, uh, but we'll have we'll have to see what it's all about. We won't we don't know yet what that will be. Yeah. But we, but the, the, they, well, the woman at the union, the, well, well, the woman at the union, uh, said to Marjorie, "But don't worry, we won't leave you out in the cold." Okay, whatever uh, that means. What are you saying? Twenty or thirty bucks. Twenty or thirty. Twenty bucks. or thirty bucks. Right. Up to a maximum of eighty bucks if you want the bells and whistles. Right. What's a bells That's and the, whistles of yeah. a COVID What's test? A you want to go to a private. Uh, oh, hospital. You want to have your own room when right. they do it. Nobody wow. in line. So why is that? Do you think? What do you mean? Well, why are the costs so so varied between the countries? Oh, I don't know. What well, that, some of it you can do yourself, and some you know they'll send to you, and some you can go in and get it done. And 
I have well, the same uh, experience in the Philippines. You know, hey, Rob, uh, Rob. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Trump signed an executive order about saying that the drug prices had to be uh, whatever we pay uh, or other countries pay, we should be paying the same as that. Well, but that's not true then. It didn't happen. Maybe he signed it like every executive order he signs that means nothing. Well, I don't know. That's the great thing about Trump. He says so much and you lose track of it because he's always doing something so crazy. And you can't, you can't, Phil, Phil, when are you going to learn that you can't sign an executive order and it necessarily becomes law? He's not King Trump. Not yet. But he is. My drug so what, what's changed. going on with that? You know, yeah. he did sign the executive order. Uh, I understand he met with uh, executives. Symbolism. From, it's from okay. the, uh, Hold on, guys. Kevin Stopper uh, hasn't been saying much uh, tonight, and uh, mm-hmm. Vernon, not as much. Anything you want to say, Kevin? No. Okay. He just nodded no. That's good radio uh, is to have somebody nod no. <laughs> And uh, Vernon, anything else you want to add to this? Well, I agree with Rob that executive orders are not laws. And a lot of it, these, especially the ones that have been happening at, at certain times this year, they've been happening as a distraction when something happens that he doesn't like. Right. Politics. Well, yeah. what's, what's wrong with uh, paying the same as other countries, even Canada? The, the other no, countries will either have to pay more and will pay less. Phil, so you're not telling us anything. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not no, arguing. You, you, we, 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 we have, we've been saying this for years, okay, that we pay way too much for drugs in this country. Yeah. You can go to Canada and you can buy them for a fraction of the cost. Right. We're you can go to India here. and buy them for a fraction of the cost. You, you can know, go to Mexico Trump and buy them for a fraction <laughs> yeah. of the cost. Trump no, didn't. No, Trump, Trump didn't. The point is, you know, it's Trump, got no meaning when it comes out of his mouth. Yeah, it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's no meaning when he signs that fancy signature yeah, on those proclamations. It means but, nothing. Uh, it sounds great. Rob, isn't an executive order in place until he's no long, until someone else comes in and repeals that executive order? But that doesn't mean anything. You're, the, you have to change laws. With the lawmakers, I don't know not that the president. Law, I don't know that you can have a law. That, you know, I know that they they had a law that said we had to pay whatever the insurance company asked. Uh, uh, that was. Uh, Bill, uh, go, go to go to factcheck.org and just type in Trump's uh, drug executive order and see what it says. All right, it say. It'll. I don't know. I'm sure it'll say something oh, like. Oh, okay. I thought you. Ch- I did. I'm just saying. Check it I'm out. So, I'm sure, it's going to say it's now. meaningless. While we're also, also, he that. decided to what? Go, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead, I was going to say he's as I said before. He's like a super in a building. You know, it's that time of the year, uh, yeah. just before the election, uh, where you decide you'll you'll come in and fix people's pipes or whatever. You know, and he's doing those kind of orders just to make it look like yeah. he's done something. When for the last <laughs> yeah, three and a half he years, he hasn't do. done shit. It's just like the wall. He's only built yeah. like three miles of new wall. The rest is just shit that's been replaced. Robert, you wanted to say something? Yeah, my favorite of the day is they're bringing DeJoy um, in for testimony August 24th. And Trump <laughs> tweeted that it was the Democrats that did this purposely because it's during the Republican convention. What he fails to understand is that it's a Senate <laughs> Republican led <laughs> conversation <laughs> with the joy. So, you know, like he gets caught in his own goddamn trap. And on top of that, on top of that, it's not like they're all going to be at the convention. Okay. No, right. <laughs> right. The problem is he could say that and most people will believe it though. Robert. Oh, sure. That's the, di- that's the, the Democrats thing, right? fuck this up. Hey, yeah. l- listen, that's it. We've run out of time here. Thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate your participation. Brian, good to see you here. Rob, great having you. Bree in Kuala Lumpur. I can see the top of your head there. Uh, hey, Vernon Nunn, love having you here. Jeff, great. Uh, we got uh, John Larkin, we got Kevin Stopper, we got uh, 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 Phil Meyer, and we have uh, Robert Natali. And, and look who's there, ladies and gentlemen, that's Adrian. Hi, Adrian, how are you? Oh, boy. Oh, what a lovely. Yeah, oh, she, she, she's incredible. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel for tonight. And if you all wave goodbye, I'll wave goodbye at them. And then I'll switch to my camera and say goodbye to you out there. 
Uh, it's been, it would be great to have them all here tonight. Good panel. Good panel. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection over most of this same GabNet station. Uh, so stay tuned for that and call him. He uses Skype, okay, because he's old-fashioned. And uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night, uh, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And as usual, be safe out there and wear a mask, okay? Okay? Okay?